Okay, now let's talk about IAM users, Identity Access Management users. Okay, IAM users are similar to normal users in Linux. This user can interact with the console and also use the command line interface. I'll show how to uh, you know create a user and how to use CLI with the IAM users. Okay, so hold on till then. Now let's see the, what is the second point. AWS IAM users or identities that you create within AWS I, identity and access management and that you can use to interact with AWS services and resources. I'll show you how to do that in a while. In simple terms, IAM users are the accounts you create to grant access to individuals or applications that need to interact with your AWS resources. Each user has a unique set of security credentials. Basically, it will have something called as access key ID and the secret access key. So every user will have their own access key ID and the secret access key. We'll show you how to create that also. That are used to authenticate the user and authorize access to the resources, okay? With IAM users, you can grant permissions to access specific AWS resources or actions within those resources. You can also set up multi-factor authentication that is MFA and password policies to enforce security and reduce the risk of unauthorized access. So basically when you create an IAM user, so add an extra level of security by having multi-factor authentication. Basically, whenever you order something or whenever, let's say you, uh, you know, uh, for example, um, if you're working in a co corporate environment, let's say, when you log into your uh, laptop, it will ask for a code, right? You will enter a six digit code and only then you will be able to access your laptop or your desktop or your work computer, right? And the same way it is acting as an extra layer of security, right? So even though you mention your username, password, you are entering the code which gets into your phone. So that is an extra level of security that you are providing. So those things also you can add for IAM users. IAM users can be organized into groups, which makes it easier to manage access permissions for a set of users with similar requirements. Let's say we have two person with A, uh, with a and B, right? So let's assume A and B are two people and they are administrators of my account. So this is my account and I want two administrators to manage this account. So the person is, uh, first person is A and the second person is B. So instead of creating, you know, as, uh, you know, two different uh, users and uh, assigning, uh, you know, separate policies for them, what I can do is I can create a group and assign a common policy for that group and once I add users into that group, they will inherit the property of that, right? So they will inherit whatever the policy that I've added into that group. So they will be use, using that group policy and able to access or do whatever the role that I assigned to them, okay? So that's about group, right? I'll, I'll talk about separately on groups, uh, wait till then, but now let's complete the IAM users. Okay, so using IAM users is a recommended best practice in AWS as it helps you to control and manage access to your AWS resources in a granular and secure way. It also provides an audit, audit trail of actions performed by each user, which helps with compliance and troubleshooting. So basically it will give you an audit trail where you can go and see what user is doing what. So which user is performing what actions in our AWS account, whether he is deleting an EC2 instance or creating an EC2 instance, what he is doing, you can analyze by going through the audit logs and you can troubleshoot further, okay? So we can create a maximum of 5,000 users in a single AWS account, okay? Now let's go back to the AWS management console. All right, now let's go ahead and create an IAM user in the management console, okay? So this is my AWS management console. I've logged in as my administrator credentials, okay? Now let's go ahead and create a new user. To do that, 
you can search for IAM here in the search bar okay and click on open uh, IAM user and open it in a new tab okay so after opening the IAM management console you will have something called as users groups and roles in the left hand side you see here you have user groups users roles policies and all those things now we are pertaining only to users let me click on users here you see i have three users in my account already created okay let's create a new user with the name a demo user okay so i'll go ahead click on add user you can specify the username as a demo hyphen user in your case it can be anything i'm just going with demo user and i want this user to have the management console access meaning he should be able to log into aws management console just like i have done here okay i'll provide that access i'll check this box and i want to create an iam user not the identity center so that is a different one and i'll go with this one i want to create an iam user okay next so you need to provide a password for that so we have provided the username and at the same time you also need to provide a password so whether are you going with a auto generated password or you are going with a custom password you can select this one so whatever you want you can specify here i'm going with a, a password here okay so uh, if you want you can verify that by uh, clicking on this show password okay so here if you see there is another option called users must create a new password at the next sign in so if you want you can check that box whenever a user logs in with this password he should be he or she should be able to create a new password by providing the old password if you want you can enable that i'll disable that for this user i'll check uncheck this box and i'll click on next here what you can do is you can at attach a policy directly or you can add this user to a group if you want to create a group of administrators you can create a group of administrator and you can add this user into that group okay so here what i'm gonna do is i'll attach a policy directly so i'll click on attach policy directly here i'm gonna select administrator access be sure to you know you know while you are selecting this administrator access be sure that you know what administrator access will provide basically administrator access will provide all the access delete create and modify access to the user okay so he can do whatever he wants in this particular aws account okay so i'll just select that one and i'll click on next here here if you see it will provide the summary of whatever you have given here the username the password and all those things if you want you can add a tag here so tagging will help you to identify your aws resources or search for resources easily and it will also help you in building consolidation okay so you can do that i'll click on create users directly okay here it will provide you the details so here if you see whatever the console sign in url so he he or she can use this url to log in okay so what i'll do is i'll just copy this one and i'll paste that i'll open a new incognito window and i'll paste this url here and let me sign in to my aws account with the new user that i'm creating okay so don't use the same browser or go ahead and use the incognito window so that you will be able to log in as a new user okay so i'll copy this username also i'll come back to my incognito browser here i'll paste the username and the password if you remember the password you can you know use the password or else i'll copy it directly from here and i'll paste the password here okay i'll click on sign in now and i should be able to log in as a new user to my aws account here if you see whatever the name that you gave i gave demo user and this is appearing here right so you can create whatever you want whichever resources you want you can go ahead and create it here okay so let me go back to my account here my uh, parent account here and once you close this one you will not be able to get these details so you can you know uh, the password and all if you don't remember you can just copy it and save it with you okay so i'll just return to the user list 
if you see here continue without uh, viewing or downloading the console password if you see here it is saying that uh, you if you you know go ahead and do it you won't be able to view it again okay I'll, i'm okay with that i'll click on continue here if you see previously i had only three users now i am also able to see one more user that i just created Okay, so this is how you can create a user in your IAM management console. All right, so now we have created a user and I have showed you how you can log into that user in, in your you know, incognito browser. Now let's see how you can log into AWS using a CLI, right? So let's do something called as, uh, you know, you need to have something called as uh, AWS CLI installed on your machine. So if you do not know, I have made a separate video on that. It is available on my channel. Please go and check that out. Okay. Now let's create something called as security credentials for this user. Okay. I'll go inside this user and this is a AWS ARM that is uh, Amazon resource number. And that is what you are seeing here. And it is saying enabled without multi-factor authentication. So whenever you create a resource or whenever you create a new user it is always recommended to go with multi-factor authentication also okay now if you see here this is the permission that we had given now let's go to the security credentials here you see the console sign-in page we, we, which we had already took, uh, taken right now if you see here we don't have the access key so i spoke about this access key here in the you know theory so i i showed you that uh, you have something called as access key and secret access key okay now let's go ahead and create that and by using this key let's try and access our aws console okay so to do that you'll go here and uh, click on create access key so what is that you are using this access key for so it can be for command line interface local code it can be for application so in my my uh, uh, situation right now i'm going to use this for command line interface so i'll select that one and i'll click on next so you need to understand and check this box before creating it so i'll have checked that box now click on next so whatever you want the description you can provide it here cli test i'll just say cli test or demo i'll click on create access key here if you see it is giving you the access key and secret key so it is always recommended not to share these keys with any of the users or even if you're with your friends because if they have these keys with them they can do whatever they they want now you might ask me why are you showing these keys to us obviously after this demonstration before uploading it to youtube i'm going to delete this user with the access key and secret key also right so if you see here these are the best practices that you need to follow you should never store your access key in a plain text or in a code repository so you need to disable or delete access key when no longer needed enable least privilege permissions rotate access key regularly it is recommended to rec uh, rotate your keys every 30 days or 60 days or 90 days usually in organizations they uh, rotate the keys every 30 days it is automatic right so you you can get to that later but one more thing if you lose or forget to uh, you know forget your secret keys you cannot retrieve it instead you can create a new access key and make the old key inactive Right. So let me copy this access key with me. I'll store it in a notepad. So it is not recommended to do this, but I'm doing it as it is a demonstration. OK, so I'll also copy the secret key and I'll paste it here. So these are my access key and this is my secret key. Now, what you should do is you should open up your CMD. OK, I'll just say CMD here and I'll open that in here. OK, so if you see here, I have opened my command prompt in my laptop. I'll just say CLS and I'll zoom in a bit. OK, now what you need to do is you need to install something called as AWS CLI. If you do not know how to do that, go ahead and just type in AWS CLI installation guide. OK, so if you are using Windows, you can go with Windows and there is a separate documentation for that. It you you just have to run two or three commands. Then you would be having your CLI installed. 
I have my AWS CLI installed on my machine so I can use it right now. Okay. Now let's configure our AWS after installing. Okay. So what you need to do is you can just type in AWS configure. Right. So after you type in AWS configure, sorry, uh, it should be, I think, uh, AWS configure. I, it, it, I made a typo here. Configure. Right. If you hit enter, it will ask you for some details. You should provide that details. It is asking for AWS access key ID. So you have that copied here. Let me copy once again from my notepad and I'll paste it here. Okay. You need to paste it. Okay, I don't think it is copying here. Uh, let me try to do that again. But you should be able to paste it here without any issues, just like this. Okay, so hit enter, hit enter, hit enter. So now you are able to you now access your AWS CLI. Let's test that out. Okay, if you see here, AWS error, the following arguments are required. That means you, you need to give some, you know, command sub commands with this AWS S3, AWS IAM list users, those things you can mention and you can get that configured. But be sure not to show, share these details with anyone in, in your, you know, friend circle or anything. Okay, so that's it I had. So this is how you can configure, uh, you know, AWS IAM user to work, you know, programmatically. All right. So now, next uh, in the coming lecture, we are going to discuss about IAM groups.